Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 38 of my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster suit. So I've worked on this for over a year and I started roughly a year before the Age of Ultron movie came out. So basically this is a 3D printed frame. It's got legs, look back through the previous episodes. It's actually a costume that you get into, you unlock all the joints and walk around. And in the previous couple of episodes, I've been working on trying to get all the features on, at least in bulk so that it looks ready for photo sheets and an event in October, which is Nerdageddon DEFCON 4 in Southampton in the UK. Have a look at nerdageddon.co.uk. So I should be taking this suit down there for it to appear in public. So I have to get the front finished at least. The back is still pretty unfinished. Last time I worked on the forearms and today I'm gonna to return to the shoulder section to work on the head and the shoulder things where the um, shoulder cannons pop out. So let's take a closer look. My t-shirt this week is Betamax, which is uh, an old type of video cassette that was better than VHS. So we've got a couple of pretty cool features that I've built in the past. We've got these pop-up shoulder cannons, as I mentioned before. Let me just activate one of those. So that pops up, the thing rotates and flashes its lights. And it shuts again, the upper one does the same thing, and that's from a joystick press on the arms. I've also got the uh, faceplate here, it's light up eyes. So this is going to fold up, and I've already kind of built the mechanism, although it isn't motorized yet. So it does this kind of double fold, and will fold right up there. So we need to put the skins on this, so it's got the visual impact, um, making sure we sort of preserve all of those mechanics, and sort of this can still open and this can still fold up without them interfering with each other. So that's really quite important. The faceplate itself was made by pressing a piece of foam PVC board over a dome, and I did this a couple of episodes ago, and then I've scored this for the feature lines and basically painted it up, of course. And I made some other pieces at the same time, including this piece of curved floor mat, which I did the same thing with, and three in one and a half mil white styrene. So I've made these rather nice domes, um, which will of course be used for the rigid sections. So last time I used foam PVC board on top of floor mats to do the um, forearm parts. And this time I'm gonna do the same with the helmet, but because it whole, the whole thing lifts up, I'm using this much lighter, thinner material. So we're gonna cover the main contours with foam as before, and then cut pieces out of this to add the rigid pieces. So I think that's just about the right fit. The white piece is going to obviously be painted gold and have a foam edge on it. So hopefully this will fit inside and this gap we just need to get just right. I stuck the other two domes on this and cut bits out of them to make the whole head there. I decided to do it in one piece in the end instead of having black foam showing through gaps. So there's a step around here and I've left a slot in the back there so I can push the back in so that I can shape this so it avoids the shoulder mechanism at the back. So the faceplate needs to sit a bit higher. So I need to get this painted up and stick some foam in and then we'll try and mount it all at the right angle. While we're waiting for the paint to dry, I've got some bits of foam that I'm gonna stick over the shoulders. So I've just cut a slot out of the back so it can bend. We can stick one piece of foam over the shoulders there.
Getting there in terms of contours, now it's time to stick some foam in that helmet and then we can do the rest of the shoulders and work out how the mechanics are going to fit together. So I put some foam around the edge of the helmet and I've uh, glued that on the 3D printed frame. The face plate's a bit more recessed than I would have liked, but um, it does fold away pretty much okay and this will of course fold up and that action's pretty much okay. I thought I'd make some detail parts for the sort of front of the neck really that's showing on Hulkbuster so I've made these L shaped pieces which will fit quite near the front angled back and I've also designed some cylinders which will go the other way behind them which are kind of look, looking like the cylinders which move the head around obviously these are printed flat on the bed and both parts will be mounted on some sort of frame and some bits and pieces which I'll make up once I've printed them and see how they fit so let's get those printed. So here are those pieces, I've used a nice chrome enamel paint for these pieces, so they're nice and glossy. Hopefully that should hide the build lines, although I'm going to be weathering them quite a bit. I've also got these two pieces which are going to fit in the neck like so, floating in front of that. And obviously there'll be some other detail behind. I've also got some red sections to stick on, which I've made in one and a half mil styrene. And I've got their corresponding foam pieces cut out. I need to glue them on and these of course fit around the head and there's some other pieces as well. So let's see where those fit on the suit. So this piece is going to fit in here. I don't know how clearly you can see that. Let's just tilt the camera forward a bit. It's actually going to have the top fitted behind the back of the faceplate and there's going to be a piece at the back there that I look over when I'm in the suit. Of course most people's eye height is down here or lower so most people are going to be looking up at it. So I don't have to worry too much. But I've got these pieces as well which are going to fit just in front so they're just visible facing out and sloping back so I just need to make a little mount to put those in there. So I've also got these other pieces which I've made which go on each side and they will fit neatly around the helmet and of course this whole thing lifts open with the shoulder pods to reveal those weapons inside. And I've also got these shoulder pieces which are going to fit as another piece just under the shoulder here to kind of um, fill in this gap although the arm of course needs to move in this direction so there needs to be a gap. Not quite sure what to do with the big gaps but as I say most people are looking up at the suit so it's not quite so important. I might put some more pistons and things in here um, selectively placed so they look like actual workings but maybe fixed so they don't rotate with the arm. I've made this mysterious piece of plastic which fits just below the neck I was thinking about maybe in the future cutting the hole out and fitting in my 3D printed arc reactor that I made a while ago. Have a look in my channel for that. Although it is going to be quite hidden. So that piece fits down there where basically the chest of the wearer would be. Followed by the pistons which are going to be fitted in front of it. And I think I'm going to bring this faceplate forward because it doesn't quite fit in the helmet and that would mean it just covers this. I also need to build some sort of rim that fits in here which would actually be the chin of the helmet as well as some other details. And then in front of that, we've got these pieces, which I've made an angle bracket so they can stick just in there. And I think that looks sort of like the right levels I want there in terms of layering. And it looks pretty good looking from all angles. Of course, as I say, most people will be looking from below. This is what we've got this time in terms of the main contour pieces, which I'm pretty happy with. This sort of view angle is pretty much uh, higher than most people will look at the suit, as I say. 
Most people will be looking at the suit from this sort of angle, and if you're a child, then even lower. So I'm quite happy with my neck arrangement there of those um, 3D printed pieces, even though it looks a bit funny from higher up. Practically no one is going to look at the suit from the top. I probably need to do something about the shoulder bell bottoms, where you can see black floor mat, but as I say, I'll come back and put some mechanics in there so it looks like it actually does something. I made quite a few of these pieces off camera, including some of the greeblies on the shoulder there. And there are more to come on the gold parts, and what I'd really like to do with these gold parts is put some lights in. But I haven't quite decided what to do, so I've left those open for now. But um, even though there's some additional weight on that hinged pod part, it still does actually open okay, and the weapon fires. As I mentioned, I've done some of these pieces off camera because it's probably getting boring seeing me painting bits of plastic and gluing things together. And the main aim of this is boshing through to get all the panels on so it's ready for the event in October. So I will be coming back to do more detail on the electronics, some of the 3D printed mechanics, greeblies, lighting, sound, all of those things. But for now, I'm just trying to get the overall appearance looking good for photo shoots from the front. The back is still completely open and blank, which I'll be doing as well within time. So next time I'm going to be looking at the legs where I've never finished the calves or the feet and that should conclude getting all of the panels on the front and then I can come back and do those detail parts and do some more painting and weathering and merging all those things in. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and other projects. Don't forget to check out my 3D printed Star Wars BB-8 and R6 droids and also my alien xenomorph suit which is also nearing completion. I'll have some more projects in the future don't forget to check the social media links in the description to this video.